Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love these watches, everything you see here this weekend is for sale. Names, references, and prices in the description when available. Otherwise, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing questions, offers, sales, and trades. Any of these watches you see here, and of course, if you're looking to sell a watch, we are buying not just individual watches, but entire collections, regardless of watch count or value. If you do want to sell, also reach out to tmasso at the watch box.com. Now we're going to discuss one of the most talked about watches of the last two years. This timepiece, the Jubilee BLNR, has been with us for a little bit over a year, and already folks are saying that this is a watch that polarizes. Some are absolutely smitten by the historically correct combination of the silk and Jubilee bracelet with the black and blue bezel that first debuted back in 2013. Others, perhaps, wax nostalgic about the former Oyster bracelet model. What I can tell you about this 40 millimeter stainless steel all-arounder is is that it is wonderfully thin for a 100 meter water resistant dual time sports watch. The bracelet is more comfortable than the previous Oyster and it vents better. Moreover, with the current generation of Super Jubilee bracelets, you don't have the rattly feel of the original hollow center link, hollow end link bracelets in the Jubilee fashion because this watch is as sturdy as most of the Oysters from the past while also venting the wrist the way only a small multi-link bracelet can and you can really see how it vents the wrist on a hot day from below. Now, of course, the Jubilee historically from the 1950s through late 2000s was always an option on the GMT, but it was rarely seen as most folks opted for straps early on and then later the Oyster Bracelet. This historically correct reimagining makes for a very compelling watch and with a dual time functionality, a calculator bezel that allows you to calculate a third time zone and now the caliber 3235 base, it's the 3285 in this watch, you have a full three day power reserve and enforce the 100 meters of water resistance with a chronometer certification. That said, if you want to stick with a full bracelet, one that enjoins people to absolutely no controversy, there is the 15500 also launched last year. This is the latest version of the Audemars Gate Royal Oak self-winding. 41 millimeters in diameter, there have been changes to the dial that are quite obvious, even at a glance. You can see how the dial no longer features the automatic crest down at six o'clock. The hands and the indices have changed a little bit, but you'll also note that the stub index from three o'clock is utterly gone. Clean, supplanted by the date, which, as with the previous generation 41, is a monotone disc the same color as the dial. You have the white gold hex bolts on the dial. The dial itself, I should say, surrounded by a lovely rounded octagon inspired by the viewport of a vintage diving helmet, and you can see the quality of the finish on the metal, the bracelet by itself taking 10 hours to finish manually, creating finish where you wouldn't even expect it, as there are bright polished ends at the terminus of the intermediate links, and you can only really see them by rolling them through the light. The bracelet is built the way no modern Patek bracelet is, which is to say individual removable links are held in place by screws, not pin sleeves, and the clasp is sufficient to be fit to a full sports watch as the swing arms and the chassis are immensely tough, redoubtable, and confidence inspiring. Built the right way, you can see the bracelet is fit to the case with bars and screws, not spring bars. Screw down crown, 50 meter water resistance, and with a screw down crown and a 50 meter resistance, this black pantograph cut Grand Tapisserie dial Audemars Piguet is swimmable. Turned all the way over, you can see the next generation caliber 4302. Power reserve increases from the previous 3120, now 70 hours instead of 60. The beat rate goes from 216 to 288, so it's even more resistance to shock-induced timing deviation. Full balance bridge with a free spring index, as ever, making it a very tough movement, and it is bigger than the prior caliber, which means it fills a larger display case back. Hacking and quick set, you better believe it. This is a watch that gives you everything without compromise. The iconic 1972 to present Gerald Genta Royal oak design with a size that frankly wears somewhere between a 42 millimeter offshore and the 39 millimeter jumbo as it is a broad watch on the wrist and I recommend for a 15 centimeter circumference wrist or larger but every surface meticulously hand finished satin and polish twinkling like a cut gem in my light box. Now for something completely different we're sticking with Holy Trinity but we're fleeing 
from the Valley de Jeux to Geneva, and we are talking about Patek Philippe, a dress complication, and possibly the best version of the 5270, the 5270P, diamond between the lug suits. You know it's a platinum Patek. Launched in 2018, this is probably the definitive version of the 5270. This is the one where Patek got everything right. A rose-colored salmon dial with blackened indices and numerals, blackened white gold leaf style hands, perpetual calendar with aperture display, and of course a chronograph function with the sweetest feeling column wheel, this side of a longa datograph. I consider them to be equal in feel and sound. Really, it's a dead heat between this and the datograph and the caliber L951s for the best chronograph pusher feel on the market. And of course you have that perpetual calendar, you have a crescent style moon phase, and when you turn it all over you have caliber 29535 there's also a perpetual calendar function mixed in, but on the reverse side you see just the chronograph functions. You can see the black polished and capped Geneva style column wheel. The cap historically was not for beauty, it was there to prevent the horns and levers within the crenellated towers from popping out in the case of shock. So though a feature of finish today, the cap on the column wheel does have an historic functional purpose. Six position adjustment, not the chronometer standard of five. You can see the Paul and Paul wheel for the jumper of the instantaneous minute change system. And you'll appreciate that all of the levers, horns, and yoke of the chronograph in stainless steel are satinated on their tops. And as you can see well, they are mirror beveled on their edge. You'll also note the use of an interior angle on the chronograph clutch. You have an overcoil hairspring and a freesprung gyromax style balance. And because this is a contemporary Patek Philippe in-house caliber, you can see there is hacking seconds. The lateral clutch, you can see, is fully jeweled, so there are no bushings in here. Everything pivots on a jewel. And note the golden surrounds emulating vintage chaton from the pocket watch era. The depth of the movement is excellent, as you could look not just upon it, but down and through it from any angle. Throw this watch on the wrist and... 41 millimeters in platinum, it's substantial. You really do feel it. It's an absolute pleasure to wear, and at about 50 millimeters lug to lug, it has a lot of wrist stance, coverage, and presence for a Patek Philippe. They tend to be a little bit more petite. This is not a petite Patek, nor is it a shrinking violet, though thin enough to fit underneath a dress cuff. This is a timepiece that has a little bit more of an extravagant brashness to it than a conventional Patek Philippe dress watch. This one is outgoing. Did I mention something completely different with the Patek? Let's talk about an entirely different universe, albeit not that far from Patek's Plan Les Watt Geneva factory. Out in Nyon, Switzerland, we have Hublot, and in 2016, Hublot, the porthole people, launched possibly their most interesting in-house caliber ever. As you can see, the movement here, HB1201, is built to look like what we would call a rector set in the United States, and what international audiences would call Meccano, essentially a children's toy for constructing mechanical devices and novelties. And as you can see, the girder-like construction and alignment of wheels within this movement truly does echo mechanical fabrications of the mechano nature. Two enormous barrels, 10 days of power reserve, and two power reserve indicators. You can see how there's a rack and pinion system that drives these two power reserves. I'm going to start winding the watch. You can see there is a red indicator at 3 o'clock that lets you know you're down to 48 hours of power reserve. And then at the base of the dial, you have the satin finished and skeletonized 10 day power reserve indicator wheel. So I'm going to start winding. And you can see as I do so, the red alert at 3 o'clock will slowly disappear once I've wound more than two days of reserve de mosh. And now you can see we have four days indicated down at 6 o'clock. 45 millimeters in blue ceramic. This watch gives you 100 meter water resistance. It gives you a push button strap removal system. It's that easy to remove the strap for cleaning or strap swapping. You can see that because it is made of ceramic, it is very scratch resistant and also very light as the watch is constructed entirely of rubber, titanium, ceramic, and sapphire. All of these are exceptionally lightweight materials. And though it's a 45, you can see it sits on my wrist quite easily. It has a full deployment clasp that is both twin trigger released and a minderless system, so there's no need for strap minder loops externally. It tucks all excess length underneath the wrist. It is a very cool look 
and it cuts to the heart of what we love about mechanical watches. And if you, like me, hate scratches, this is the way to go, as ceramic watches will never have been refinished, so it's a great type of watch to buy pre-owned because you know it's never been polished. And if you look at how Hublot handles ceramic, you can see they both satin finish it with a media blasting and polish it for a handsome but subtle contrast. A truly impressive timepiece from folks who probably aren't known for their prowess with movements, but probably should be going forward. An entirely different take on luxury ceramic sports watches. This is a model launched in 2016, itself based on a model launched in 2013, the 50 Fathoms Bathyscaf in ceramic. Now the ceramic cases for these are 43.6 millimeters compared to the standard watches 43, but this model steals my heart first because the combination of the gray, almost metallic ceramic tone with the blue is perfect, and second because it gives you everything I love about the 5015, but with the stripped down lines the understatement of the bathyscaphe and I should say the scratch resistance of ceramic. Again, look how sharp these creases are. No swirls, no scratches, no scuffs, no dents. A ceramic watch, unless you truly traumatize it, will look as good 20 years hence as the day it rolls out of the factory in Les Brasseux. Now Blancpain cut no corners here, whereas many ceramic watches do feature some sort of PVD titanium or steel pin buckle. Because Swatch Group's material science is formidable, you have a full ceramic pin and buckle. Both of these as scratch resistant as the watch, and even note how they managed to facet the pin itself. So the finish is also impressive. Now there are no crown guards here because that's the fashion of the bathyscaphe. It's a little bit more of a vintage aesthetic than the 5015. Let's hear the bezel. It's not quite as loud and distinct as something like a Panerai Luminor submersible, but it's nicely refined, and I will actually say it feels a little bit better with a more distinct detent than the standard 5015. Ceramic insert inside a gray ceramic bezel, blue dial, metallic, and of course, when we turn the watch over, this is the piece de resistance. It is the caliber 1315, three mainspring barrels, five-day power reserve, free sprung for toughness, six position adjustment, like the Patek, one more than a chronometer, silicon anti-magnetic hairspring, and that's why you can see the movement. Unlike the standard 5015 here, we have a display case back because the anti-magnetism is achieved by a silicon hairspring rather than the soft iron cage of the standard 50 fathoms. The finish is outstanding. There's mirrored anglage, satination, and media blasting on the 18 karat gold winding mass. You could see that the anglage is a mile wide on the bridges hand-finished and exquisite. The only place you're going to find broader anglage is Philippe Dufort. This is that good. You can see there's satin graining across the bridges rather than a hackneyed Cote de Genève. There's a wonderful spiral satin deeply grooved across the surfaces. Every jewel and screw countersink has been polished internally and every screw head has a polished, black polished top with a chamfered slot and circumference. You can see that the wheels themselves have been satin finished, including a lovely diagonal radial double solar on one of the reduction wheels of the winding system. You can see there is a lot to love on this movement. And I should mention, hacking seconds and a quick set date, it has all the modern standards. Throwing it on the wrist, comfortable, light. Because it's short across the wrist, it wears more easily than a 5015. And because it's ceramic, it wears lighter than the metal versions of the Bathyscaphe. A handsome watch, and we're gonna do a loom shot. We're back with the bathyscaph. As you can see, all three hands loomed and plenty of it. No doubt what the time is or where the bezel pearl is located. Now I always like to throw in value propositions and watches that are accessible to mere mortal budgets. And this is actually a 2020 release, one of the few 2020 releases to have reached pre-owned status already. It is the Bell & Ross BR0392 White Camo Limited Edition. It's made of ceramic, as you can see. It is a 99-piece limited series. It is 100 meters water resistant. Internally, it's powered by an ETA 2892, which is a thin automatic. The watch, of course, with a case built by Chatelain, which is a case maker owned by Chanel and thus available to Bell & Ross as a Chanel company, the case is world-class ceramic in a very wearable size. The BR03 debuted in 2007 
after the 2005 instrument watch with its original 46 millimeter size proved to be a little bit much for most wrists, the 03 proved to be almost perfect. Because of the 2892, it is a thin watch, and because of the Chatelaine case, it has external finishing and fastening that's world class. Truly an attractive watch in every regard. It's also a little bit offbeat as the watch uses a ski type winter camouflage, despite being a summer 2020 limited edition and special release. A cool watch in every regard and timepiece that makes a statement without putting a dent in your bank statement. Well, at least not as big a dent as this big bruiser. This is a 2013 1,000-piece limited edition part of the Panerai Special Series. This is the PAM508 Luminor Submersible 1950 Ceramica three-day power reserve, a true diver with the chunkiest and most pleasing, almost riotously fun bezel feel in the industry. Have a listen to this against the mic. It sounds as good as it feels, and it feels as good as it sounds. Of course, this is the 1950 case, a little bit more elaborate, curved, and complex than the original Alessandro Bettarini case of 1993. This case design, at least in the modern era, debuted in 2002 with the PAM-127, and historically, it echoes the lines of the 6152 Italian Navy combat watch. You've got a full ceramic device protecting the crown, unlock it, and you can actuate the crown, wind, you can set the time zone hand that allows you to move the hour hand independently, hack the movement for precise setting, very easy to operate and more protection than a conventional shouldered crown guard. Flip it over and you can see the SLC, the manned torpedo used by Italian Navy frogmen during World War II, most famously in the Radon Alexandria. It's essentially a mine with a motor and a battery that you can ride into a harbor, attach to the bottom of a warship and then hopefully make good your escape before the time runs down 1,000 pieces individually numbered the case back is titanium the movement is a three-day automatic in-house caliber 9,000 so you're getting all of the Panerai goods with this watch throw it on the wrist and you can see this ISO 6425 compliant diver is big, but it's not terribly bruising. I could say, though, this is a huge watch with a 57 millimeter lug to lug span. I could wear this comfortably as a sports watch. Would it be necessarily the most apropos dress component? I don't think so. But then again, the man makes the watch, not the other way around. And if you've got that really big wrist, the tree trunk forearm, if you're a football player, if you have those kind of needs, this is the perfect watch to celebrate the summer, barbecuing, swimming, letting it go washing the dog and never worrying about scratches because of the ceramic case this is the way to go let's do a loom shot Right there you can see plenty of loom, and you'll also note that the second sub register is fully loomed There's also an enormous bezel pearl and you know I prefer diving bezels to chronographs as it's simply easier to read a diving bezel when, for example, you're cooking out on the grill or you've got some short interval, less than an hour, that you need to time. It's just easier to read a dive bezel. Somewhere between a sports watch and a dress watch, you have the 2019 200-piece limited edition Zinn Frankfurt Financial Time Watch, 41.5 millimeters in stainless steel. This explores the softer side of Zinn, which after all is based in Frankfurt, the European continental financial capital. You have a rotating bezel that can be used for gauging the distance, or I should say the difference in time between your exchange, wherever it may be, and other exchanges, so you know when the overlapping hours of business occur. Now, the watch, of course, 100 meters water resistant, allows you to hide the second time zone when you don't need it. So you can clean up the dial, but you do have that independent time zone in a 12 hour format. The watch is all of high polish and handsomely made, as you can see. Thoughtfully detailed with lovely tapered lugs. It also has a handsome bracelet that, if anything, is over-engineered. Nicely made, tapered links, staggered size and alignment. It has a five link design with satin finished intermediates and as you can see using large diameter hex screws to fix the removable links and then there is a double deployment trigger actuated clasp what we have inside is a salida sw 500 it is a 
basically Salita version of a Valjoux 7750 in top grade. Zinn then adjusts this in-house to keep chronometer grade time. You can see the skyline of Frankfurt, the financial district, engraved in the rotor. And you can also see the mechanical finish, and it is mechanical finish, but it's done to a high degree. Blued screws, polished chronograph components, engine turning all over the bridges. And you can see that to good effect right here. Because it features Etichron and it's a top grade movement, it can be regulated very precisely to keep outstanding time. And, of course, it features Zinn's D3 pusher system, so the chronograph pushers are more water-resistant inherently and better braced against shock if there's ever impact. A watch that fills the wrist but not obnoxiously, it's a handsome sort of surf-turf option, a watch you can take in the water but then comfortably wear to events that require formal attire on land with an explosive blue dial. This is the 6099B, 200 pieces in limited edition. Okay, as I often say, now for something completely different. Based out of L'Aubersant, de Bethune makes 150 watches a year, meaning as far as limited editions go, virtually every watch in the collection would qualify. This is the iconic DB28, and here in a combination of scratch-resistant black zirconium and their proprietary fired blue oxidized titanium. A few features I like about this watch. One, it's only about 12 millimeters thick, which means it's thin. Second, the spring-loaded lugs means the watch will find the right size on your wrist. Third, I love the fact that if the titanium is ever scratched, because it's fired at the factory, it can be re-fired at the factory, and the coating can always be restored during service. The timepiece is broad, flat, and comfortable, being feathery in zirconium, titanium, and of course the sapphire front and back. It feels almost like a toy watch on the wrist. Sometimes luxury is about getting less than you expect, not more, and in the case of mass, that's definitely definitely the lesson to be learned. The takeaway here is that this watch is about being different in every way. The way it feels, the way it looks, the way it fits, and the way it's engineered. There is a spherical blued steel and white palladium moon phase. There is a balance of titanium with white gold masses outboard. That's their own design patented. Blued titanium, de Bethune patent. Spherical moon phase, de Bethune patent. This balance, de Bethune patent. This was their sixth balance design, and they're still going and refining. Triple parachute shock protection. There's a shock protection spring on both sides of the balance staff, which has Inca block for its own uses. So three shock protection springs, that's patented. The dog leg bi-element hairspring that creates the same concentric beating as an over coil without the thickness and shock susceptibility of the overcoil. That is patented. Twin self-adjusting mainspring barrels with a six-day power reserve. That is patented. And there is a titanium blued and black polished bridge underneath the hands that is hand finished and again uses that patented blued titanium technique. There is a stub power reserve indicator fixed and floating over Cote de Bethune on the dial, a deeper, more thickly ridged type of Cote de Genève. Turn it all over and you have engine turning all over the base plate and you can see the full satinated and gold plated power reserve mechanism with a larger and more intuitive six day power reserve visible. This is a watch that represents the 2011 GPHD Aiguille Grand Prize winner. The golden needle or the golden hand, it's the grand prize at the Oscars of watchmaking and this is the latest version of the watch that won that August honor. Truly special stuff. Exclusivity guaranteed from the hottest and fastest rising watch brand in independent horology today. It even has a very fun bullhead type winding and setting crown. I don't like to be predictable, so I try to mix it up. But I have to admit, even given my best e efforts, Ulysse Nordin has not featured often enough on this channel, at least not the rank-and-file watches. Sure, I've had the Sonata, the Freak, Minute Repeaters, things of that nature, but the basic Marine Diver, which debuted back in 2001, has been the franchise for Ulysse Nordin in the modern era. Now, the timepiece is 40 millimeters in stainless steel and easy to wear, which means on just about any wrist, this watch, which is about 46 millimeters lug to lug, wears beautifully. A kinder, gentler era of dive watch design and sizing, it's a perfect unisex object Option, in addition to giving a more tasteful stance, presence, and impression on a man's wrist. Now, the watch, of course, features a number of elements that set it apart from the conventions established by Rolex and Blancpain in the dive watch sector back in 1953. As you can see, the watch is basically a 
downsized marine chronometer or deck clock for your wrist. Ulysses Nardin's heritage in the 19th and early 20th century was in the creation of deck clocks or navigation clocks for ships. And you can see a lot of the styling traditions of those are reproduced here. You can see there is a sort of concave profile to the case visible on both sides. There is a bolt fixed individually numbered plaque on the flank. This would have been present on a marine chronometer, individual numbering. You can see that the shape of the case, but also the layout of the dial echoes those marine chronometers with the power reserve up at 12 o'clock, small seconds down at six, and then you can see the dimple pattern, which also recalls history. There is a complication made by Ulysses Snorda in-house to create this caliber 26, whereas the standard ETA 2892A2 chronometer grade movement has 21 joules. This one has 28 joules, so UN creating the small second power reserve complication in-house for this watch. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It is 300 meters water resistant. Interesting fact, the case back is made of titanium to be less bioreactive against the skin. You can see 18 gold medals won by Ulysse Nardin between 1862 and 1964 at exhibitions. My personal favorite, Chicago's big comeback from the fire, 1893. Now, of course, we have all the features you expect in a dive watch, screw down crown, constant seconds indicator, and a dive bezel that has a wonderful detent. And in the era before ceramic bezel inserts, Ulysse Nardin went with full metal to resist scratches, so there's no anodized aluminum to discolor or disfigure. Let's hear this bezel against the mic. It is very vocal and very satisfying. And I should mention, it has an outstanding clasp with a fold-out deploy in action, so you can use this one over a wetsuit, a dry suit, or simply a thick winter coat, as I've often used dive extensions as such. Sticking with UN, we return to the predictable. I've featured the Freak before, but this Freak Out, a model launched last year, represents possibly the friendliest point of entry into Freak ownership without going into the Freak X and the Crown territory, which not everyone likes. The Freak Out was also one of the last brainchild projects of longtime Ulysse Nordin President, CEO, and U.S. Chieftain Patrick Hoffman. So this is one of the watches created by the elite cadre built up by Rolf Schneider during the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. The point of this watch is that it's a combination of unusual features for a freak. It has water resistance, 30 meters. Historically, that's not common on freaks. And being rendered from titanium, this 45 millimeter watch was the first series production base metal freak, so you don't have to pay the precious metal premium to get into Ulysse Nardin's most distinctive modern watch. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it's surprisingly thin. It has the same lateral individual numbering plaque that we had on the marine chronometer, but it's mostly of satin finish, so though it's an extravagant watch, it is muted in tone. Now, of course, the freak is all about its showpiece. Baguette movement on a carousel. To set the watch, you lift the lock down at six o'clock, lift it up, and then you turn the bezel. And because this is a carousel and not a tourbillon, there are two separate drive systems. One powers the escapement, one powers the rotating carriage. The carousel was invented in the 1890s by Bonnet Bonnickson, who wanted to create a more durable but fundamentally similar alternative to Breguet's tourbillon to rotate an escapement through gravity and even out error. And because the carousel does have those two separate drive mechanisms, I can turn the whole movement and the carriage without crashing the escapement. It is a loomed watch. Let's do a loom shot real quick and come right back to this macro. You can see the hours and the minutes, easy to read and intuitive even by night. Now, what you're seeing is the essential movement, the drivetrain, the escapement, and the balance, everything except the power supply, which is on the reverse side. Just as you set the watch with the bezel, you wind the watch, and it has a seven-day power reserve. You wind the watch using the case back. Now, we're jumping back to the other side. The baguette movement includes a double impulse full silicon, unlubricated, and importantly, in-house escapement. The escapement, the silicon anti-magnetic hairspring, all of that made by Sigatech, Ulysse Norden's silicon subsidiary, purchased back in 2006. Operating unlubricated, it dramatically extends the intervals between service, and as you can see, it is also free-sprung, making it a tough watch overall, though not 
a hard rough and tumble sports watch because of the 30 meter water resistance, the movement itself is actually quite resilient. And you can see the attention to detail as all of the sapphire pivots are clear rather than synthetic red ruby. It's a more industrial modern look. And if you look carefully, you can see that the balance uses recessed bolts for superior aerodynamic qualities. It isn't as effective or affected as I should say by internal aerodynamic resistance because of those retracted bolts. Also note the use of blue satin and blued, fired blue, not dyed screws. A gorgeous watch in every regard. If you want a watch that is just as colorful with just as much history at its respective brand, but you have perhaps a more modest budget, this was a 2017 U.S. market limited edition, the Tag Heuer Monaco Golf Racing Special Series. As you can see, it recalls the golf racing livery that has been borne by innumerable cars over the years, though probably best remembered on Porsche 917s and Ford GT40s. The Aston Martin, I think it was the B0960, of 2009 through about 2012 was my personal favorite use of the Golf livery, and my second favorite was probably the Arena Motorsports run Stefan Johansson Audi R8 in the early 2000s. So this is the Golf Motorsports livery, of course, related to Golf oil in a Tag Heuer Monaco of the 39 millimeter Sapphire Crystal generation. You can see through the reverse side, automatic caliper, 42 hour power reserve, and you'll like the fact that this watch is 100 meters water resistant, so unlike the original Monaco, this is actually a swimmable timepiece. Throw it on the wrist, and though a 39, it wears somewhat larger than that. The timepiece has a rectangular case. It's not truly square, so it's slightly oblong. And as you can see, it's quite chunky. There's a lot going on here. So it doesn't wear like a 39 so much as a 42, so size accordingly. This feels and looks more like a 42 on the wrist. It's Tag Heuer's most iconic shape with the most iconic livery in racing. And since the Monaco model is often associated with racing and has been since 1969, this is a great combination made in motor racing heaven. You'll also note the use of reference to history, not just in the livery and the design of the watch, but in the fact that it is Hoyer branded. You'll note on the crown, it's branded Hoyer. On the dial, it's branded Hoyer. You can see it is branded Hoyer on the rotor, and even on the clasp, it is branded Hoyer. Tag is not invited to this party, so if you are a traditionalist, this is going to be right up your alley, and again, a more affordable watch than the norm on this program. Breitling, another mid-market option. This one's not quite as affordable as the Tag Heuer or the Bell & Ross, for example, but you get what you pay for. Three-day power reserve, 100 meters water resistant, a COSC certified chronometer, and vertical clutch and column wheel thanks to the in-house caliber B01 movement, which is both good looking and capped by the image of a Norton motorcycle, as this is a collaboration between Breitling and Norton Motorcycles of England, the revived Norton Motorcycles. The premier line is a little bit more classical, inspired by the 1950s than uh, contemporary lines like the Aviator. This is a watch that has a lovely confluence of colors, textures, tones, and materials with rose gold plated numerals, indices, and hands, a twin register, layout that's nice and clean compared to the usual B01 tri-register. Of course, there is a deeply knurled crown fitted on this watch as well as the aviators that you can feel and eyes closed, you already know what you're holding. One of the most distinctive crowns in the business. Rectangular pushers, both satinated and polished on their flanks, and lovely wraparound bevels at the ends of the lugs. It's a 42 millimeter steel watch, and when you throw it on the wrist, you can see the match between the strap and the dial is perfect. Uh, the tonal complement and the textural contrast as you can see between the metal and the rusticated simulated aged leather is gorgeous and it really does throw you back to the cafe racer era of the 1950s and 60s that modern day Norton motorcycles are intended to evoke. This is a thoroughly realized concept and one of the best limited edition, or I should say limited series, for it is not truly a numbered or limited edition, but it is limited by production and distinctive of the Norton series. This looks unlike any other Premier. A truly special watch, right down to the thoughtful inclusion of a box section sapphire to evoke a vintage plexiglass. You get a lot with this watch. I'll also say, short of Patek and Langa, this is probably the sharpest and most satisfying, and I would say overall, most purely mechanical column wheel feel you're gonna experience in a chronograph. Now, high horology, 
boutique horology, independent horology, all of the above. Launched in 2017, this is the Laurent Ferrier Montre École Régulateur, a timepiece 40 millimeters in stainless steel. It features a charismatic regulator dial in a case designed to evoke Laurent Ferrier's first school watch, hence the nomenclature Montre École, the timepiece, with a sort of gray anthracite vertically satin finished dial, silvered sub-registers, and a lovely red varnished central minutes hand is beautiful on the front but breathtaking on the back. You can see the caliber Laurent Ferrier 220, in truth designed between Laurent Ferrier and La Fabrique du Temps. It is a master class in finishing. As good as it gets, I mentioned the broad bevels on the Blanc Pain. These are just as broad, but impressively, they're paired with features you don't see on the Blanc Pain, like giant black polished components such as the skeletonized half bridge for the balance and the entire bridge for the winding system. You'll also note that it features the same mirrored jewel and screw countersinks, chamfered slot screws with chamfered circumference, and broad, deeply ridged Cote de Genève that you will see on the best of hand-finished watches. A feature most hand-finished watches do not include one, two, three, four, five interior angles. You can see the sharp crease where two bevels meet internally. That is an interior angle, and next to black polish, it is the other supremely difficult finishing craft that finisseurs will study for years to master. You'll also appreciate that this is high-tech and high-spec horology as a system with twin nickel phosphorus wheels inspired by Breguet's 1802 natural escapement. It impulses the balance only in its direction of travel. There is no Swiss lever in this movement. By impulsing the balance only in its direction of travel, Power reserve is increased by reducing parasitic losses, so the watch has a three-day automatic winding power reserve, and precision is improved to chronometer levels, adjusted in six positions. Again, that is one more than a chronometer. This watch leaves no place for deviation of time to hide. Free sprung with an overcoil hairspring, it includes the high horology refinements you would expect in a watch of this stature. Laurent Ferrier finish is probably the best kept secret in the industry. I don't feel like this brand gets enough buzz for the way it makes watches and executes them. They could have gone with no black polish, no interior angles, and a conventional escapement and sold just as many of these watches. The fact that they went the extra mile on small parts that most people won't appreciate, much less look for specifically, it speaks to the integrity of this company and the products it makes. And you'll see the 40 millimeter case wears an absolute treat on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. When people talk about the best in finish, they generally talk about independence. Philippe Dufour, Roger Smith, Lang und Heine. They talk about the likes of Grubel Forsey, and Grubel Forsey oftentimes is considered to be, if not the best in finish, certainly the company that gives you the most finish, simply because of the scale and the depth of the watches the company makes in La Chaux de Fonds. Stephen Forsey and Robert Grubel, respectively, the engineer and the artist, creating these watches at a pace of about 100 per year, despite having 100 employees, they have a ratio of one to one between watches made and employees on payroll, and that is extraordinary. Take a look at this movement. There's a lot going on. You can see deadbeat seconds. You can see that there is a stop seconds function. You could see there is a power reserve indicator, and you could see there is an angled balance, but if you take a quick look, you could see there is a constant second sub-register, and just beyond that, a mass of springs constituting a differential. This is the Differentiel de Galité, a timepiece that uses not a fusée, not a remontoir de Galité, but a differential system to continuously mete out equal force from the main spring barrels to the escapement, with the result that for 60 hours, the chronometric power reserve, the one watch will maintain constant amplitude, the long sought constant amplitude solution that doesn't include pulsed bursts of energy, which you find with Remontoir, or tremendous complexity and drag, the parasitic effects that you find in a fusée system. Now you can see every angle is mirrored. Every single bevel is broad. You can see there is frosting on the bridges, a white gold hand engraved scale for the power reserve, fire blued hands, black polished hands. You could see that the bridge for the balance is continuously rounded and black polished. You could see when you get into the watch that 
pinion leaves, the teeth of wheels are polished. You could see the mechanism on the reverse side that actuates the hacking seconds, and you could see just how broad and expansive the black polish is. It's not just the functional components, it's the entire surround. This limited edition of 33 pieces in white gold, 44 millimeters, and blessed with the super text that explains in French the philosophy of Grubel Forcey. In a nutshell, preserving traditional handmade finishing and low volume craft horology. That's what it means. You can see there is gold gilding around the pivot jewels, just like the chaton of a vintage pocket watch. And as with the Laurent Ferrier, you can see there are sharp interior angles where two bevels meet. In fact, there are so many of them on this case back and in this movement that I struggle to count them all. The case is beautifully made with welded on lugs, double finished. So you have a satin case band and then concave mirrored profiles for the lugs themselves. The watch, though extravagant, large, and certainly an imposing presence, is not a big bully, as I can wear it easily enough on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Look at the depth of that movement, which is over 8 millimeters thick and over 35 millimeters in diameter, properly sized to fit the case. Guys, this is as good as it gets. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for all your purchase and pricing details.